Hey everyone, welcome to my deep dive video on influence. The first thing to talk about is really what is influence? What is meant by the term influence in humankind? Now, I'm not a developer. I'm not part of the actual team that built the game. This is just my own personal description and definition. If you have more insight into anything that we cover in this video, please feel free to leave a comment or a question in the video. I'd love to discuss it. So what is influence? I would summarize influence by saying that it is power over others and others power over you. To best illustrate, I've actually gone toward the end of a game and I'm looking at my own empire zoomed out in the society view, which is this button here. Uh, so we can see that all of my, well, for the most part, most of my territories have influences besides just from internally within my own empire. Now, interestingly, these territories over here, even though they're bordered by the Mongols, actually don't have any influence from the Mongols. And I have a theory, I have a theory on why that is. But many of the other territories have a rainbow of influences from other territories. Most of the other territories or most of the other empires in the world exert some amount of influence over my territories. Now, in this particular case, the influence that you see generated in these other territories probably comes from two things. Uh, number one would be their proximity to another country. And number two it comes from trade. Uh, so when you buy or sell, primarily buy, I believe, but I think it's both buy and sell. When you buy or, sm buy or sell commodities, whether they be luxuries or strategic resources, or if you have a strategic relationship, if you have an alliance, then you exert influence over that empire and that empire exerts influence over you. So let's just take a look at one of the example territories here. And when you click on any of these, whether they're your own territories or uh, the territory inside someone else's country, it'll show you where the influence is coming from. So I'm just hovering over this one and it shows me that this territory is currently part of my sphere of influence my empire has a 34% hold over the territory. So it is majority. Well, it is the largest proportion, but it's not a majority, right? So it's not over 50%. When I click on it, we can see flow flows of influence from my territories to this territory, from other regions to this territory. Look at all these colored lines that are coming in over the sea. This must be a large sea trade port, whether for inbound imports or outbound exports or both. So I think that's a big reason why we see so many different other empires influencing this particular territory. The last part of the definition of influence that I'd like to cover in humankind is actually a difference between influence and stability. They are not the same thing. As you can see, I have the city of Roma highlighted here, which is this large territory. It's got a couple of outposts attached to it. I think it looks like two, maybe three. Bellatrix, Omgar, and Sagmatha. Uh, these are all... Sorry if I butchered that. These are all uh, outposts that are attached to the city. And the stability right now of this city and its surrounding territories is currently 96% and going up to 99%. Now that's different than the view that we saw before in the society view, which shows influence. Influence of other territories or other empires in Rome itself is zero. It's completely influenced only by my own empire. But influence on some of the surrounding territories, the outlying provinces, if you will, the um, outposts, is mixed. So it's important to remember that stability does not necessarily equal influence. They're not the same thing. Okay, so more about influence. 
How is it made? How do you become more influential? Where does influence come from? Maybe starting with uh, relating influence to films or food, industry, aka production, money, and science. When you create districts, those districts, specialty districts, uh, generate one of those four things. Farms make food. So similar, there are specialty districts that generate influence as well when you create them. So let's look at my capital up here, Babylon. Let's zoom in. And we can actually see the icons that show you. Um, I've got them toggled on here. This is the toggle down here. Um, these show you what each tile generates and how much it generates. So this particular tile that I'm hovering over is the city center, I believe the main plaza of my capital. It generates 54 total influence, which is quite a bit. Now there are other tiles that generate influence as well. And if I want to see how much total influence a city generates, I can go to my cultural view and click on an adjacent city or territory. I can see that Rome, for example, generates 109 total influence. So how is it created? It's created by districts, much like food, industry, money, science. It's also created by the people within those cities. Your culture essentially creates influence. And lastly, and maybe a little more hidden, is you can actually create or bolster your influence through treaties. So if we go to um, the Brazilians and I are in an alliance together, if we go to treaties, we can see that we have a cultural agreement and if you hover over this, it says plus 5% influence on empire. Now, again, not a developer, not part of the, the team that's making this game, but I believe that what they mean by that is that this alliance helps my culture, my empire generate 5% more influence. Not just over Brazil, but 5% more influence points per turn in general by having this. Now, if I had another treaty and an open border policy with another empire, that would probably generate another incremental 5%. And there are also decisions that you make along the way. That's why it's important to pay attention to those. There are decisions that you make along the way that can uh, affect your influence that you generate in the short term or the long term. Some things only last for 10 turns or 20 turns. Some are permanent changes. And the decisions that you make along the way as far as your um, civics also greatly shape the amount of influence that your culture generates as well. So what do you actually need influence for? Well, Consequently, there are four things that you need influence for in the game, four primary things. There may be other game mechanics that I can't see, but in observation, there are four very big important things that you need influence for. First is to create outposts. You've seen this from the very beginning of the game, the first outpost that you created. You needed influence in order to create that. So you had to find curiosities as you were exploring in order to create that first outpost. Every outpost costs more influence to create than the last one. Same with cities. Creating cities or converting outposts to cities costs influence. And creating every subsequent city costs more than the city cost before it. So they get more expensive. So you need more influence. So those are the first two, creating outposts and cities. The third is making civics decisions. Now, as you can see, I've got 16 and a half thousand influence and I have three outstanding choices that I haven't made. I haven't made these decisions along the way because I didn't have enough influence. So army wages, for example, I've got 16 and a half K 
in order for me to make this choice to either pay my soldiers or to pay my soldiers through plundered wages is going to cost 14.7 thousand of my 16 and a half thousand. That's a lot. The longer I delay these decisions and the more influence I have, the more it costs. So there isn't necessarily a benefit in delaying from a true cost perspective, but this costs a lot of influence to make these decisions. And the last and probably most important thing that influence does is it actually keeps your cities held together within your empire. If you didn't have influence, your empire would crumble, your empire would fall apart, and your territories would divide themselves and go off to other empires. So that is the very most important part of influence in humankind is keeping your empire together. So let's talk conversion of outposts and cities. I think this happens way too easily where an outpost or a city of yours converts to a neighboring empire. That's what's happening right now to this outpost that I settled in an attempt to try and block the Mycenaeans from settling uh, basically too far east. As you can see, we're at a 66-44 split. Uh, this outpost is... I'm not even sure if the outpost is done being built yet, and it's already converting to the Mycenaeans. I don't know what the threshold is. I have not learned that, but I have learned that it is really easy for you to lose, especially unattached outposts, to a neighboring empire, especially if they have a hard border territory next to you. So be careful, lesson learned, be careful settling outposts if you don't uh, either convert them into a city or attach them to an empire fairly quickly. They will convert over to the neighboring empire. Three, two, one. Now the follow-up thing that I learned to losing territories to conversion to a neighboring empire is how to help prevent it. As you can see, I'm on the civics view, which is this one here. It's early enough that I don't yet have religion, uh, or that would be the third button down here in the left. It's only turn 31 in this game. Um, so this shows uh, the proportion of influence that you have versus in this, or that I have in this case versus the Mycenaeans. So you know, they have a hundred percent influence over this territory up here because it's basically blocked by the other territories from my influence. And right now it's just us versus them in this area. Uh, I have the same situation over here where my capital is a hundred percent under my influence, but these other two territories are 79%. Uh, they have one that is 56% under their influence. It says 55. It maybe rounds up in the display. So I'm, I'm getting close to possibly being able to take this over. Uh, so, so influence is what controls, you know, these percentages. And influence generated within a specific territory actually matters. So one of the best ways to prevent or even reverse a territory from being converted is to add your own empire's influence to that territory. And the best way, not the easiest way, but the best way is to add a wonder to a territory. So if I had the ability to build a wonder, they're not unlocked yet, but let's say I could build the pyramids of Giza. Um, doing that in this territory would probably reverse the conversion over to the Mycenaeans. Now, I'd have to get it done in five turns, which, you know, without sacrificing my population, which I probably don't have enough to do that that quickly. Um, but that is a good way to do it. So if you click on any of these, it shows where the influence comes from. So there's four influence coming from my capital. And there's five influence coming from their capital. 
So a couple of other ways that I could uh, have prevented this or even reverse it would be to attach this outpost to my uh, city, to my capital city in this case, making it a hard bordered territory rather than a soft bordered territory. Again, we can see that by zooming out. That it wouldn't make it 100% under my influence, but it would probably be enough to stop or reverse the uh, conversion. So attaching it, you know, and not, not having it just be an, an unattached outpost. Uh, last thing would be, since we've seen that the influence over this territory is coming exclusively from the capital, adding something to the capital that generates influence will have more influence flow to this territory, which could slow it or reverse it as well. So case in point, I went back in time a couple of turns just to prove a point here for a moment. Um, this was before I settled the outpost down here that was being converted, uh, as we saw just a second ago. So I have 93% influence in my capital, 87% in this attached territory, and 87% in this unattached territory. The Mycenaeans have 44% and I have 66% in this territory, and yet it's not converting. I think it's because it is a hard bordered territory rather than a dotted line soft border territory, and that's why it's not converting. I don't know if the threshold is just higher and it would eventually convert if it got down low enough, or if it would never convert because it's actually part of, you know, the civilization, the, the empire, so to speak, but... Um, that's just something to keep in mind that when your territories are officially a part of your empire, they don't convert quite as easily as you can see from this uh, example here. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. It's free and it supports my channel.